Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of I am Penj and welcome back to Godhood where the endless teapot, the all-knowing and the always full endless teapot is looking down on their followers of lovely tea. They're a cult currently and I think if we go up, yes we become a large cult if we get 26 more brewers and things are going okay. We've made good progress on claiming our island. Um, these guys down here, they're godless so we'll never be able to convert them over, they're just kind of a leveler up area if you like just to train some disciples but up here we've not got a lot left before we have to take on the old city and this is our ultimate goal i want to get these guys out of the way these guys must go so there's a beast walker there is a rage prophet and there is a smite sword we want them to get out of the way but we also have to get these out of the way first so there's the old city war party who I think we'll be okay with. These guys look a little bit trickier, the Dark Travellers, just because they've got a team HP of 80. That is more than we've ever faced. When they've got 60, which I think is more than ours, 80 is very, very high indeed. And these guys here, they've got 100. I don't know how we're going to sort that out. But whatever the case, things are looking okay. The rest of the island is ours. And if we go back to our city, we've got Cos Cattle, who is currently, what are you doing? You're, you're waiting for a miracle. You're going down here and telling some lovely stories down by the storytelling thing and the gigantic cup of peace. Yes, look at the teacup of peace. So much tea is in there. So much tea and people just jump in and swim around in it. That's what I'd like to imagine. Um, and other people are just grabbing some, uh, grabbing some fanatics and getting some offerings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got this lovely temple in, a lovely temple of peace. That looks great. I think that looks very, very good. I do like that. So that's in. And I think we just need to move time on until we can have a go at those first people. So I think it's these first. And the thing is, we have to take them both on at the same time. As we found out with these uh, folks down here, we have to take on the Old City War Party. And then when they're defeated, we immediately take on the Dark Travellers. So let's just have a go at that, shall we? In fact, no, who do we want with that, though? Let's get... Yeah, we want Huani. Now, Huani joined us last time. Huani is very, very good indeed. So we definitely want to take Huani with us. Huani is currently recovering. So how about we move time on a little bit. We'll see if Huani and Coscattel come back. There should be a little bit of sort of miracle stuff going on. Storyteller rituals. Yay, an amazing story of the endless teapot's exploits has been told by Coscattel. Okay, so all stories about me are true. So here we go. So what do you get? You've got a miracle myth, so you've got lots of charisma, lots of devotion, lots of knowledge, and you have a new passive ability. Oh, you get two exciting things. Right, okay, what do we want? A chance to cast Nightmare when an ally uses an ancestral ability. Okay, that's interesting. So if you're, you're with a Darian, you might get the chance to uh, use a Nightmare or chance to cast Condemn when an ally uses a divine ability. Ah, oh, well, it's either or, isn't it? It's, we've got some people who are divine and uh, some people who are some people who are uh, ancestral. How about we go with this? How about we go with divine condemnation? It's condemning people sounds brilliant. Particularly, it, it, you're just pointing at them. You're just pointing at them in a sort of slightly admonishing way. So let's have let's have divine condemnation. Blessed be Coscattle. Okay, now, did you all come back? No, Coscattle is still out for the count. Yeah, we need Coscattle back in. You're the dark person, aren't you? Yes, you're very much our dark person. Okay, yeah, so we need you back. So how about we do this again? So let's get Kuali to go around the campfire. Let's get Marathu to go by the campfire. And then Huani, who is... Oh, no, no! Huani wasn't our super person. Huani is very good. Huani is our smite sword. No, it was Marathu who was our super person, our songsmith, who went and caused all sorts of damage last time. I apologise, Marathu. I apologise. Yeah, Huani is relatively new. Marathu is from the uh, descendants of Adarian, I think. I think she's from the same bloodline. I can't remember if Huani was or not. Can't remember now. But okay. Yeah, there we go. That's the right way around. So yeah, Marathu's got some really, really good attacks going on, which is brilliant. Uh, we've got one more thing left. No miracles to perform. So how about we get somebody, uh, how about you, Coscattle, um, pop up here and get some serenity. That'll do. Go and become a little bit serene. That's quite nice. And we do have 69 fanatics. Is it worth improving something? Like, can we upgrade the Herder's Hut? Yeah, Animal Whispers. 
improves all miracles. We get plus one devotion. Yeah, why not? Let's upgrade that whilst we can. That leaves with 49. I mean, can we upgrade the Temple of Peace? Is that something we can do? Uh, it costs 50. Oh, well, of course it would. Of course it would cost 50. <laughs> can, we, can we not find one fanatic somewhere? Is there not one hiding behind a tree? Or isn't one not nipped the loo or something? Oh, okay, fine. Never mind. We'll have to wait, I think. Right. Move time on again. So time passes. Cost cattle needs to come back. Ideally, cost cattle will come back. Yay! Marvellous. Okay. Unfortunately, Marathu is still only on a neutral faith. That is unfortunate because I'd like you to join in the uh, join in the battles. And it's good if you have a higher faith. It says there, increased chance to do an extra action in a sacrament. Whereas you have sometimes will do an extra action. Yeah, I'd rather you had a good increased chance. But never mind. Right. Let's set some of this stuff up. So, uh, I don't think it matters who goes where. I don't really think it matters. So, Montezuma. Go and sit around the fireplace for a bit. Um, I don't know. Kuali. Go and get some serenity. And, uh, whatever. Darian. Go and... What do you want to do? Get some fanatics. Go and grab some fanatics, if you would be so kind. And now, let's see what we can do against these guys. Now, we might get completely battered by these guys. So here, so you resist dark, but you're weak against ancestral. And you resist nature, but you're weak versus life. So let's put in you, and then let's put in, you resist nature, but uh, weak against life. Let's put life in, which is good. Uh, you resist dark, but against ancestral. Um, so yeah, so you, it doesn't really matter what we put in here. However, we could put, uh, we could put cos cattle in, because cos cattle might get... Oh, no, it was... we Ah, yeah. <laughs> cos cattle's bonus thing. We could have had it here. We could have said cos cattle's bonus was either... He gets a chance to do an attack either when there's an ancestral uh, sort of friendly attack or a divine attack. And we went down the divine route. Oh, that's a little bit annoying, isn't it? Never mind. So you're weak against ancestral. That's fine. We won't put dark in because you resist dark. Let's pop... Let's pop Huani in. Just as a bit of a fight. Just to see how Huani can do. And let's see how we get on with this. So, we've got 10 less hit points already. We do need to go first. Okay, good. We get first... I was going to say first blood, but we're all peaceful. So we get first talking. <laughs> first words, perhaps. Oh, they've got extra health. Which is somewhat unfortunate. Right, convert. Oh, right. Okay, that was pretty powerful. Oh, that's so good. The, the attacks are so good. And you got in the way and you did four damage. Okay. So now you are going to have a go at us. So you bopped us on the nose. We dodged out the way. And you came and bopped us on the nose. Now, if last turn was anything to go by, we should be okay. 28. <laughs> oh, Darian, you wonderful person. Okay, right. The old city war party has been obliterated. Right, that was quite encouraging. But now... They can resist nature, but they're weak versus life. I think we put Marathu in the middle. We definitely don't put nature in. So let's have... Let's have... Yeah, what are they again? Resist nature, but weak versus life. What if we put in... What if we put in Kuali across the top? And then we put in Marathu in the middle. And then we put in... Kuani at the bottom, or is that the wrong thing to Let's put a Darian back in. A Darian just did some amazing work. So let's see if this can go. I mean, in terms of levels, we're miles ahead of them. We are miles ahead of them. So let's see if this works. The only thing is, they've got 80 hit points. It's such a ludicrous amount. But yes, Marathu, if Marathu gets to do their super music attack, will cause an awful lot of damage. So that's 10 down. And now. Uh, oh, you're converting. Okay, that's 13 down already. And this should cause... Oh, look at that. Oh, we get another go. We got another little go. <laughs> so they're down to 32 out of 80. However, they're going to come and cause us some grief now. Yep, ouch. Bashing us on the head. Oh, oh, you just said no. Just say no. Right, so now we've got the upper hand. So that's quite painful. Tune of life should really hurt them all. Yeah, there you go. Wow. We've just absolutely obliterated them. Okay, the Dark Travellers were not actually that troublesome at all. And we have got rid of them. Marvellous. Okay, right. Proceed there then. Oh, that was very good. We've got ourselves some more people. Oh, five off getting into the next sort of level as well. And we have fabled folklore. Stories will be told of the revival of this pillaged village. 
which would be a good band name. Hello, everyone. We are Pillaged Village. <laughs> okay, embrace those converts. Welcome them into our world. Everybody comes back in. Lots of people seem quite jolly indeed. Okay, that went very well. And now our only target is here. The old city with their 100 hit points. I don't know how that's going to go. I don't know how that's going to go. Adarian needs a bit of a rest because Adarian is getting tired. Also, Adarian is getting on a bit. Adarian's 52 years old. We need to possibly go and launch this attack sooner rather than later. Right now, though, we haven't really got that much to do. We need to give Adarian a rest. So, okay, right. Well, everyone just go and grab some stuff. You go grab some offerings. Um, you go grab some fanatics. And you go and grab some serenity. That'll do. I, yeah, we still can't do anything with other people, can we? Or can we now? Hang on, I thought we could only have four people doing so. Oh, there you go. Yes, I can't inspire more than three disciples at once. Okay, so our three disciples are out doing some stuff. Um, let's just move time on. Let's get a Darian back. At least if he's there, we can choose him for a bit of a uh, bit of a bout. Okay. Oh, and it's raining. Oh, it's raining. It's a, it's a lovely tropical storm over our lovely tea settlement. Uh, but now all these people are looking a bit glum. So how about all of you lot gather round the fireplace? So Marathu and you and Koali, you go round the fireplace. Now, what are we up against again? A Beast Walker, a Rage Prophet, and a Smite Sword. Okay, so we're going to have to have a look at what we need to uh, get on board to face them. Let's have a look. So, they resist Divine. They're weak against Dark. So we're going to want a Dark person, a Divine person, and a Nature person. Okay, so Dark... Oh yeah, but the thing is, what are they, are they good at? They resist Life. So yeah, so we need a Dark, a Divine, and a Nature now, fortunately, we do have that. We do have that combo ready. We have got a dark, a divine, a nature. We've got dark. We've got two divines. We'll put Koali in. And we've got a nature. Is that going to be enough? Is that going to be enough? Because, I don't know. Do you know what? Let's give it a go, shall we? Let's just see if we can do this. Yes, okay. They've got double our hit points, which is a little bit silly, isn't it? Hopefully, though, we will have enough cunning to go first. And if we go first, we might cause them a big chunk of damage. This might help us see where we are in relation to these guys and whether we need to do some training. So here we go. Let's have a look and see what we can do. 100 hit points. They've got to, Oh, and they've gone first. Okay, right. We're not going to win. We're not going to win. It's all over already because if they go first, they're going to knock us down even further. However... We have just knocked over a quarter off theirs, but they just did whack us in the face. So now that's 11 off us. This is six off us. And this is going to be huge, isn't it? That's one. Oh, no, that's one. Okay. Right. If we could cause a massive pile of damage, that would be marvellous. Right. Mind fog is 10. And that's 25. Oh, my word. You're getting in the way. That's only seven. Oh, oh no. And that's six back on us. I don't think we're going to do it. But do you know what? We're not far off. We're not far off. Oh, hang on. You've just caused 10. And you're out. That one is out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on. Survive. Come on. Come on. Dodge. We could do this. We could actually do it. We could, we could defeat the old guard. And bang. And another go. Proof that the endless teapot is great. And boom. Take this proof. Oh, come on. You've got a cause for... No. <laughs> no. Oh, he was so close. We were so close to defeating them. Oh, Montezuma's at least miracle charged. So we might be able to send Montezuma to try and get some more cunning. Oh, we were so close. That was, that was, oh, that was way better than I was expecting. I thought we were going to get absolutely battered. But no, that was okay. Okay. So yes, nothing happened from that. Um, they're all a little bit tired, of course. because They've just been sort of beaten up a bit. And we have gone up. We are now on level seven. So uh, we don't get any buildings to build, but we do get some more worshipper support. That's lovely. So that's up to 45. Oh, choose a ritual. Through their endless devotion, you enable your brewers to worship you in one of these new ways. Monasteries, a holy place symbolizing introspection, or human sacrifice. <laughs> Um, I mean, given that we're a peaceful people and that we just love drinking tea, I think human sacrifice might be that might be a little bit extreme. 
<laughs> you didn't drink your tea today, Brian. No, please. That's it. We're going to have to cut your head off. Oh, but it got a bit cold. No excuse, Brian. You should have drunk it quicker. Let's go for monasteries. Let's go for monasteries. And we'll have monks in the monasteries that can make tea. How about that? Because some monks in monasteries make, you know, other things, make wine and beers and things. So, yeah, why not? Let's do that. Yes, let's have a new monasteries ritual. Now, does that mean we build a monastery? I imagine it does. Yeah, there you go. Inspire the construction of a monastic order. Uh, where can we put you? Let's put you up here. That's a logical place next to the Temple of Peace and near the goalposts. So, what do you do? Um, are you just another thing that you can go to here? But what happens from this? What happens? Disciples write a Tome of the Endless Teapot's Wisdom, a relic which increases faith and morale stats. Disciples need to have performed at least two miracles. Okay, hang on. Can we do something with this then? Uh, well, let's pick a Darin. He's performed many miracles. Oh, we need 50 offerings. Oh, and it temporary, temporary lowers faith. Oh, that's probably generally a bad thing. Well, let's grab some offerings anyway. You go and do that. Um... Marath in fact, you know what? You lot might need to go and have a little sit around the fireplace. Yeah, you're all feeling a bit sad. So you go there and uh, Kuali go around the fireplace. And then next time we'll do Montezuma's uh, miracle thing. So for right now, move time on. Oh, I, we were so near. It was one of their free attacks, wasn't it? That sort of jumped in and that caused us some trouble. Okay, Montezuma. Let's get you down here to increase your cunning and knowledge. However, before we do that, have we fully improved the marketplace? No, we've not. We might have plus one cunning. That's perfect. That's what we want. Uh, all miracles, eloquent pedestal. So we're going to have a secret stash to give us an extra cunning point. Yes, please. Thank you, fanatics. Well done. Now, Montezuma, get down here and go and do some miracle stuff. Um, everyone else, you can grab some offerings. And in fact, someone else can grab some offerings as well. Go and grab offerings, please. Everybody go grab offerings. Right, Montezuma, what's happened? Please tell me it was very, very good and very dramatic. So, da-da, market miracle. Wield and deal goods on the marketplace with impeccable skill. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Montezuma made a good amount of offerings. So we got five offerings. And hopefully lots of our skills have gone up. Two knowledge, two cunning. That is very encouraging indeed. And a passive skill. Oh, yes. And you were involved. So let's see what we can do here. Entangle when another ally uses a weird ability. It triggers rarely. Okay. Or extra move when another ally uses an ancestral ability. That also triggered rarely. I'm more, I'm more like to use that. That's more specific to an ancestral person. Weird abilities might be on lots of people, although I don't quite know what constitutes a weird ability. <laughs> but let's get spell combo. That sounds like a fun thing to have. Um, and now, do we need to go and do some training? I think we might just need to level people up down here just to get more miracle charges in. I think that's what we might need to do. Who's nearly miracle charged? Uh, Marathu... Um, Kuali could do with going up. Oh, and Huani. There we go. Right. So this should be fairly easy. We'll defeat these guys. So let's just get this out of the way. There we go. Already done. Huani just literally stood there and watched as the other two took care of it. So there we go. Now, does anybody miracle charge up? Two of them. So Marathu and Huani, and then Kuali will come back with in a couple of turns to do that again. So we don't get anybody from it. That's absolutely fine. But we have two miracle charges, which is brilliant. Um, also, have all our things been upgraded now? That's been upgraded. Has the circle been upgraded? Yes. I think they only have two upgrades each, don't they? The market has got two upgrades. The meditate ah, the meditation site hasn't yet. The meditation site has not. And the herder site has not, of course, because that's relatively new. Okay. Right. Marathu. Yeah, let's send you on a miracle thing. Marathu, you come down here and get some cunning, please. Try and improve your cunning. Whereas Huani, what? Oh, we haven't got... Oh, no, we will have enough stuff for you. 58. We will have enough stuff. Uh, enough of those to get you a miracle. Okay, lovely. That's good. Um, what do we want to get you to have an increase in? You do massive physical damage uh, that scales both might and devotion. So maybe, maybe we get you some devotion. Which one of these things increases your devotion a great deal? Knowledge, health and devotion, charisma, health down there. Um, okay, this one here, health and devotion. That's a good thing for you as well. 
over to the tavern, a heavyweight drinker. Okay, <laughs> fine. And um, then we'll get, um, I don't know, Montezuma to sit around the fire to increase your faith. Okay, right, lovely. So stuff's all going on. Let's move time on. Let's see what happens as a result of the miracles. Da da! Hoani roared to the tavern in the endless teapot's name. I challenge you all to drink lots of tea. Agave? No, not agave booze. Oh, okay, scrap that. Lovely, delicious Yorkshire gold flowed generously that night, but it was Hoani alone who tumbled triumphantly out of the tavern, <laughs> completely, completely off his face on tannin and a superheated infusion of free radicals, such as the nature of tea. The rest of the brewers, while in awe of Hoani, couldn't stand up for another day or two. Hawani has my resilience. Okay. <laughs> right. So health and devotion have gone up and you've got a pointy ability. You're challenging heresy. Okay. And you've got a passive ability. Uh, might or devotion. Well, let's also up your might because your powers also use might as well. You get bonuses from both. So let's increase your might. Blessed be Huani. And Marathu did some good stuff over at the marketplace. You'll get a couple of points of cunning out of it, which is lovely. You've got a new ability, which is good. The Song of Praise. Oh, that's a new one. Deal morale damage to all opponents. Also heals some religion HP. Target all opponents at once. Often has a reduced hit chance. And you get a passive as well. Oh, yes. This is very good indeed. So you either get 25% religion HP if this songsmith participates, or use performance when an ally scores a critical hit. Oh, absolutely. I don't know what performance does, but yes, we'll have that because that sounds like a good thing. So is it worth another go at our enemies? Is it worth another onslaught into the old city? So you're weak against dark. Let's put dark across the top, just in case there's anything that goes, you know, to the opponent that's opposite you. You're weak against divine. Let's put Kuali in. And you're weak against nature. In goes Montezuma. Hopefully this will work. If not, at least Kuali might go up a little bit and get a miracle charge. And that might help for next time. Here we go. Now, we were quite fortunate last time. And I don't know how to get the hit points up either. I assume that's to do with health, is it? Maybe we need to get a few um, a few more sort of training bouts under our belt. And use miracles to increase our health, possibly. But we are getting a couple of free... Oh, my word. Hang on, did we just go first? Oh, we've just gone first. We're absolutely tearing them apart. We are ripping them to pieces. Oh my word. <laughs> They're down to 16. They're down to one. One out of it. We just took 99 off them in one go. And one of the people is down. And we just... <laughs> oh my goodness me. We have just absolutely annihilated them. We have just utterly crushed the people of the old city. Wow. They didn't even do anything to us at all. I'm a I am amazed. I, I am... I am gobsmacked. My flabber is well and truly gasted. Oh, that was marvellous. Okay, well, let's proceed and see what happens now. I imagine we must get a little bit of a story bit now. Remorseful elders. After the endless teapot proved their superiority in the sacrament, the elders grovelled in fear. Truly, the word can change one from the inside. The endless teapot had finally come to the old city. Peace mended what was once broken. The Endless Teapot commands, bless those who spread peace. Absolutely. So we got a big pile of disciples. Oh my word. Oh my word. There's a lot of people there. So we've got leveled up. The old city will follow lovely tea. The one true religion. Oh, absolutely. And our disciples are also going to get a reward for doing the quest for peace quest. Okay, well, let's level up first. We can do that now. So let's level up and see what we get. It doesn't seem that long since we went to level 7. And now we've got them to level 8. So we get a reward, which is nice. A new commandment for your religion. We get increased worship and support. And we get to dedicate... Oh, do you get another statue? <gasps> Can we have another teacup? Or, or is that gone now? Can we not just have a load of cups? Because that would make perfect sense. Okay, right. Confirm. What is right? Choose a commandment. So we can't have generosity... <laughs> Why can't we have generosity or greed? We can either have lust or chastity. Oh my goodness me. Okay. So lust says, indulge in worldly pleasures. Cries of passion, love and gratification will fill your temple site. Chastity will become a vice and may not be selected as a commandment. Or chastity, purity starts with a clean body and mind. Your worshippers purge their sins through cleansing and abstinence. Do you know what? Let's go down lust. 
Let's be peaceful and lusty because we're lusting for the tea. Because this sounds more passionate. That sounds a little bit sort of, you know, a little bit cold and sterile. And we're all a happy, excited folk. And we're all drinking the tea and we love the tea. And that is why we're so lustful. We're lustful for a lovely brew. So, okay, let's pick lust. <laughs> let's be lusty, peaceful people. As your flock affirms the commandment of lust, they gain some stuff. All uh, all shall marvel at the body the endless teapot gave me. Me and my neighbour are going to follow this commandment passionately. This sounds a bit intense. I don't know if I'm ready for this. So a couple of them are like, yeah, absolutely. Lust, here we go. These two are a bit, you yeah, don't really know what's going on. Go and enjoy each other. And also the tea. Uh, the Endless Teapot commands us to explore our bodies with tea, of course. Adarian, profit to the endless profit. Okay. <laughs> a firm lust. So lusty, peaceful tea drinkers we are. And what else do we get? We all got some sort of award. Oh, is that the award? Didn't we all get an award? Hang on. What was that then? Adarian. Did we all get something nice and lovely from that? Did we get a new ability or something? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Character traits, peace and lust. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, what's this then? So we can dedicate another statue. Okay, so yes, plus one charisma, plus one devotion. Um, where did we go? Where was quite good? We've used the market a few times. We've used the market quite a bit. Um, that up there, not so bothered about that. How about we put it down in the market? Because I quite like the idea of getting cunning. I like the idea that cunning allows you to go first. And going first in the sacraments is quite important. So yeah, we'll put it down here. Now, ah yeah, we can pick the cup again. Hooray! Yes, and we'll have the cup of peace. We'll just have loads of cups everywhere. Another cup of peace, please. <laughs> Absolutely. And Kuali is Miracle Charge. A lot of Kuali's attacks are based around devotion. So I wonder if we can get something to increase devotion just here. Let's send you over to the pub. Over to the pub with you. Health and devotion. Yes, you go and do that. Uh, and then we'll get Marathu to go around the fireplace. And Huani to go around the fireplace. Just to try and restore your faith a little bit. Because you're a bit unsure in the, uh, the lustful antics that are going on right now. And that's fine. I kind of get that. That's okay. Um, right, so let's move time on. What I'd like to do is... I want to, once they've finished, you know, moping around by the fireplace, hopefully that'll make them a bit happier. Yay! Okay, you've also been drinking. Marvellous. Well done, Kuali. So you get yourself health and devotion, which is lovely. So teach a passive ability. What can we have? Lively burst, chance to follow up when an ally uses a life ability. Or doubt the dead, chance to use question when an opponent uses an ancestral ability. I mean, it's either or, is it? Let's go for lively burst because it sounds far more fun. Let's go for that. Yeah, let's have a lively burst, shall we? Okay, so I just got everyone to grab a load of offerings because I want to see what this thing does up here now. Our little sort of monastery. So who can go to the monastery? Cause cattle. You've got the highest number. So you go up here and see what this does. So it's going to temporarily lower your faith. But then we can get that back by just sitting around the campfire for a bit. In fact, Kuali's, always, Kuali's faith is always like that. Kuali, let's get you to do this. Tired hands, temporary for eight days. All right, so you're going to make something. Okay, so you go and do that because we're not entirely sure what that does. And then uh, anyone else, you go grab some uh, some offerings. You go grab some fanatics and we'll see what this thing does up here. Okay, so we've got ourselves a relic. We have made a relic. It's a book. The Tome of the Endless Teapot's Wisdoms. This is brilliant. And that goes to a disciple. Okay, so it's just a common relic, but it goes to an actual disciple. So we can equip it to a person. Uh, but now Kuali is down. So Kuali is a little bit uh, a little bit sad. So Kuali, go around the campfire. That will increase your faith a bit. Right, now what does our book do again? Uh, faith and Knowledge. Who would benefit most from this? Um, let's have a look. Who has got a lot of attacks that are based on knowledge? Uh, let's have a quick nosy. I don't think anyone in particular. No one in particular seems to have anything great. However, could we not? Could we not remove the uh, the acts of execution, the acts, the peaceful acts of execution from a Darian and give that to Huani? Uh, oh, we have to pay 30 to unbind it from them. Eh, whatever. Okay, that's fine. So let's give you that axe, because that makes more sense, because you're more likely to do physical attacks. So follow up when an ally scores a physical critical hit. Oh, oh, possibly I shouldn't have done that, because an ally 
Oh, yeah. Right. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. That's entirely the wrong thing to do. <laughs> oh, bother. I should have read what it said. Yeah, they follow up when an ally scores a physical critical hit. Can only slot ancestral abilities. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, I've just made an absolute hash of that. Okay, right, forget that ever happened. I didn't just do that, all right? Do you know what? Let's give Koali that book. You can have that book, absolutely. And it's made you a little bit happier as well, I think. I think it's uh, hopefully... Yeah, there you go. It's affected your faith. So even though you've just made that book and it made you a bit glum, you're now back on good form already, which is marvellous. So yes, let's undo this, shall we? Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. So yeah, that means that they follow up when an ally scores a physical critical hit. Now, Huani is most likely to do physical critical hits because that's what these attacks are. Judgment is massive physical damage, but obviously they're not an ally. So this isn't going to really do anything. So we need to unbind that from you, which is a big old waste. We'll give it back to you. It's fine. It's your axe of execution. You, you can have that. It's your own axe. That's fine. And um, right, that's that sorted. Now let's just have a look at the map. Let's see what the map now has to offer. Oh, we can go to two entirely new places. So what are you? And we get sky shards from over there. They're the strifing under chiefs. So they're all ancestral people. Or we can go this way to over here. We get sky shards as well. And they are Itzler's Ascetics, Ascetics. Um, and they are all divine people. Okay. And I guess when we do those islands, let's say if we take this island, we'd move on to this island. And if we took this island, we'd probably move on to down here or whatever. Okay. So yes, we spread our religion across the lands. But you know what? I think we've seen enough of Godhood to kind of get the idea of how it works. And we would just be able to continue on. I'm very impressed that we took down the old city people how we did. I'm amazed that it worked that successfully. I mean, there was a great big slice of fortune in there. I imagine we had some very lucky rolls and some criticals and some other stuff going on as well, which meant we all attacked at the same time. But you know, I'm really impressed that we got there. And that was always my goal. I always wanted to try and get this first island under our control. And I knew it would spread over to these islands, but that makes perfect sense because that's how the map sort of works. But I think we've seen enough to understand how the game works. And I kind of think, you know, it will just go on. We'll just go on and we shall continue taking over these islands. We'll spread the religion of lovely tea across these places and they will all follow the one true and accurate god of the endless teapot. But you know, we can just imagine that happening. We can imagine all these people following the religion of lovely tea. And you know, they gather around maybe every day or something. They gather around for their little ritual, their religious ritual of, you know, I don't know, boiling the kettle and pouring the tea into the teapot and then having a lovely brew and a nice sit down. And perhaps even as a religion expands, maybe we could introduce biscuits, maybe, you know, little sort of dunkable biscuits or whatever. And perhaps even a bit later on, maybe even cake. I think that would be lovely. A nice slice of cake to go with things as well. So I think we'll finish up for now with Godhood, but it's very enjoyable. It's not what I expected at all. It's not what I expected. I did not think it would be like this, but it's very enjoyable. It's very, very enjoyable. But yeah, I think we've kind of seen enough of Godhood to get the idea with how it would work across those other islands. We'd expand, we'd get more disciples, we'd get more fancy buildings and all that kind of stuff. So I think we're at a very good point to leave it for now. And we'll just use our imagination to imagine the glory of the lovely tea religion under the watchful eye of the all-knowing and all-brilliant endless teapot but yes we shall finish up for now so hopefully you have enjoyed our little look at godhood if you have then please do leave a like the endless teapot doth command it so so yes best leave a like or else the endless teapot will be after you and also if you are not already then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other stuff and nonsense and gubbins and shenanigans that we get up to in the geek cupboard but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i will see you next time Flying rhinos are not allowed. Pink hippos are fine, but no flying rhinos. Doing that for that length of time is making me feel very uncomfortable. You're like violating me with your weird zebra eyes. Get off. Mystic. Okay, this is just an acid trip. If we can crash into a rainbow, then something is fundamentally wrong with the world. Whoa, you cheating giraffe git.